Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. As you know, I am TB. I was sitting around watching some highlights and I came across some Johnny Davis college basketball highlights and it kind of got me thinking, what's up with him and why haven't we seen much of him the entirety of the year? Watching him at Wisconsin, I just knew he was going to be a special offensive weapon and if he could develop a little bit more, his defense would come into play as well and make him one of the better guard defenders in the league. Now in this one, I'm going to take a little insight into his rookie year, some of the things that have gone on and why we haven't seen him as much this year and the fact that we are going to see him in the coming future. But before we jump into this video, like comment and subscribe if you're new and let's hop in with the 10th pick in the 2022 nba draft the washington wizards select johnny davis from the university of wisconsin after a disappointing year going 35 and 47 for the second straight season, the Wizards have finally fired their GM Tommy Shepard after missing the playoffs for the second consecutive season. As it normally goes with firing a GM, this catalyzes a new beginning for the Washington Wizards. Last year, Tommy Shepard re-signed Bradley Beal to a max contract and many in the fan base, they did not think this was the best idea. Some of his other decisions include trading John Wall for Russ and then eventually getting the deal to get Kuzma and Przingis to Washington. While all of this has been going on in Washington, a lot of us have seen to forget they still used their lottery pick in last year's draft and we didn't see much of him all year. Most thought Johnny Davis would be inserted into the lineup almost immediately next to Bill, Kuz, and Przingis. And though he wasn't, it was still very shocking to see him not get quality minutes in the rotation like the rest of his peers. Now, Johnny Davis is born and bred out of Wisconsin. He played high school ball there as well as college ball. So this is his first time being away from home. And as we all know, as soon as you leave the nest, you essentially are expected to grow up pretty much overnight. All of this sudden change and to complete it all, right before training camp began, Johnny welcomed his first child into the world. Now, Johnny explained how early in the year, he was the first guy to pretty much leave practice citing that when practice was over guys were wondering where Johnny was just after five to ten minutes after practice ended. Now if there's any athletes watching this you know like I know when it comes to the decision makers when it comes to playing time you staying on the team getting cut things of that nature being the first person to leave practice is not a good sign. Many coaches always talk about how a guy's intangibles are there and when we talk about the intangibles we talk about a guy that comes to practice early and leaves later than everybody else. Now in the NBA, this is especially important because when it comes to practice, the two hours that they use, that's team practice. Those are team fundamental drills and things that are team oriented. After practice, that's usually when you get your personal work where you develop your game. This is the first unfortunate event involving Johnny and his career. Midway into the season, he dealt with a hip issue that sidelined him as well. It affected his mobility and that's something that isn't really ideal for a rookie looking to adjust to the NBA. The start of his NBA career, it's been shaky to say the least. In both the summer league and in early regular season minutes, Davis appeared lost on the floor. There's no other way to put it. It was almost like all the confidence he had gained from being one of the best players in college hoops just disappeared. The 6'5 shooting guard was hesitant on jump shots, halted his drives when met with resistance, and he fouled way too much on defense. These struggles were uncharacteristics and things that we didn't see with his time with the Badgers. But rookies struggling at the start of their career, it's a tale as old as time. We're used to that. Personally, I do believe the fact that he had his first child coming into the world, it did have an effect on his development and his timetable with regards to getting playing time and things like that in a Washington uniform. As he said, he was the first player leaving practice, so he wasn't getting that developmental coaching that normal rookies have been getting throughout the year. He had to kind of get acclimated and adjust to that schedule of being both a father and an NBA player all at one time when you're just a young kid coming out of college. Now, personally, I can't blame him for putting family first and injuries they're part of the game but with this first year under his belt and a chance to learn the ropes a bit while the team wasn't really expecting the world out of him could we be approaching a Johnny Davis to slide into a role as Bradley Bill's primary backup and eventually move into his role the Wizards sent Johnny Davis to the capital city go go their G League affiliate he flashed some of his defensive brilliance early but the offensive game it took a little bit more time to come to fruition in his last six games in the G League though he averaged over 18 points per game and 
and it showed the front office that he was ready for a call up which he received johnny has appeared in six consecutive nba games for washington and in the last five that he had played for them he averaged 15 and a half minutes and nearly six points now obviously these numbers are far from spectacular but they do represent a drastic improvement from his early season form he's been much more confident in attacking the rim and a much more willing shooter additionally he's been putting in work on the defensive end you can see it and for what it's worth he could be one of the league's top defensive guards in due time as it goes with any rookie going into a sophomore season is going to be integral for davis to get stronger and add several more pounds of muscle in terms of specific skills johnny has already highlighted his outside shooting ball handling and free throw shooting getting in the lab this year he should hone in on his shot creation for himself and for others and you know in college davis was a scorer and we saw him almost single-handedly lead wisconsin in the ncaa tournament he's already shown his pull-up midi to be a strong suit along with his ability to getting to his floater so using those as a foundation for his work i personally could see him being a very deadly player come next year especially with development as that comes another aspect of the game that goes way under the radar it's his defense he can become a very good defensive player as time goes johnny is a 6'5 guard but he has a build similar to that of anthony edwards with long arms and some sneaky athleticism the plus side to all this is that johnny is no stranger to work like this when he started out at wisconsin he had a pretty shaky freshman year by his standards and then his sophomore year he came back he figured it out and he had a year that pretty much shot him up the draft boards instantly which made him a lottery pick that he is today based on the end of season run by davis there's reason enough to be confident he's developing into the nba player washington had hoped it would get when he was selected with the 10th overall pick one game in particular when i was watching that stood out to me was the game against miami they had a six point win a little bit later in the year and it was a game where he didn't quite go off but it was a game where you saw the flashes of talent and you could see like okay we're good in the pick that we have it kind of makes the front office more secure in the fact that johnny davis is a guy that's gonna develop into something special the win snapped a four game losing streak for the wizards and davis's 16 points were the most he'd scored in a win producing his best plus minus in a win against a playoff team obviously johnny davis is far from a finished product however with the new gm and a fresh start the sky's the limit for johnny and in due time he can end up scratch that he will end up becoming one of the league's best two-way guard this sophomore season will be something special and as we all know that third year is going to blow us away as we all know about that third year lead wizards fans you should be very excited about this young cat and his future ahead especially considering the way he ended the year on a high note hopefully the wizards do realize what they have right now and it might be that time to start rebuilding let the Bradley Bill era go, begin from scratch, and figure out where to go from there. Try to build around Johnny, do what you can, but just know you do have Johnny Davis. I know you still have Bradley Bill, who is an amazing talent, but we've seen up until this point, you're not going to win with Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill is probably one of those players where he's not going to be the best guy on a championship team, which is okay. That doesn't mean he sucks. However, if you want to show the fan base that you are serious, it might be time to start new, and I think Johnny Davis is one of those guys that you're going to be able to build around while he still develops. It all depends on who the Wizards do hire at GM and what direction he wants to go, so only time will tell what happens with Washington. But that's going to conclude this video. I hope you guys appreciate it. I know there hasn't been a lot of talk surrounding Johnny Davis. He was one of my favorite guys coming out of the draft last year. He was one of those guys that flashed off the screen to me when I was watching the NCAA tournament, which is something I don't even really watch in general. So the fact that I decided to keep tabs just based on a couple games in that tournament to me, it meant a lot, and I think Johnny Davis, he's going to be a formidable guy. I think he'll be the Eastern Conference's version of Anthony Edwards. But, like I said, that's all I got for you guys in this one. If you got to this point in the video, make sure you drop a like, drop a sub if you're new. And as always, it is your boy TV with the greatest hoop stories in the base on the tube, and I'm out. Peace.